And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical weather bulletin for June 23rd. Subtropical depression 4 has formed in the Atlantic this evening. Um, day 175 of the year so far, still at 29 storms because this one doesn't count just yet as it's yet to attain tropical storm force winds. Uh, it's the only thing that's active in the Atlantic today on day 23 of hurricane season. Uh, nothing else waiting around and this system won't be a threat to any land, at least not likely to be. Meanwhile, in the Eastern Pacific, four areas of interest, one of them now with a high chance according to our latest estimates on day 40 of hurricane season here, could be that all four of those systems form. In the Western Pacific, no systems active right now, which uh, may be a little bit of a surprise at this time of year, but the Western Pacific, we're still waiting to really see anything big form over there. Of course, we had Vong Fong. And in the Southern Hemisphere, we still have that 10% area of interest in the South Indian Ocean, just coming off the coast of Indonesia now, a little disturbance that could form. So here is Subtropical Depression 4 as we're looking close up now, 35 mile an hour winds, a pressure of 1,009 millibars. It's 300 miles southeast of Nantucket, 38.8 north, 65.4 degrees east. Its movement will take it towards the northeast. National Hurricane Center forecasting a subtropical storm briefly. That means it will get the next name on the list and then it will eventually die off near Newfoundland um, just before the two-day mark. This will be a short-lived cyclone and whether it becomes a tropical storm or not, subtropical I should say, remains to be seen. If it did, it would be very short-lived indeed. The main feature though in the North Atlantic and the reason why we're not seeing anything else right now is a large amount of uh, Saharan dust that's made its way all across the ocean and is now blanketing the Caribbean at this point with more on the way. And in the Gulf of Mexico itself, you can see the dust down at the bottom of the image, but further up towards the uh, Gulf Coast of the United States, some thunderstorms brewing. So the Eastern Pacific looks like this, uh, two 50% stay on the right hand side, that's for later development, day 3 to 5. The 40 and the 70 on the left hand side of your image, those are going to be much more immediate. We're probably looking at development of those systems if it does happen in the next two or three days, maybe less in that 70% case. In the Western Pacific, it's uh, quite a contrast, not much going on at all here. Very weak disturbance just to the south of Guam. A few thunderstorms blowing up off the Philippine Islands and uh, elsewhere, not much going on. Uh, frontal system there, real dip down south there, south of the Daito Islands of Japan. Um, and that's blowing up towards the north there now. In the South Pacific, things looking fairly quiet. A few thunderstorms blowing up across the Solomon Islands and just east of Vanuatu, but really nothing that's really interesting to speak of at all. And in the Indian Ocean, obviously you've got that disturbance that's just moved off the coast of Indonesia. You can see on the right-hand side there blowing up some interesting cloud tops. There's actually two little disturbances there that you can see, and uh, one or two models have been hinting at possible development from one or both of those systems, but it looks likely. Sea surface temperatures around 28 to 30 degrees across a large part of the eastern Pacific ready for those potential four storms. The Atlantic really fully covered up now after Cristobal and that lick of uh, 26 degree temperatures up the Gulf Stream will be helping subtropical depression four. Um, the Indian Ocean fairly warm 28 to 30 degrees again generally the uh, South China Sea very warm and the Philippine Sea around the same as it has been as well so uh, the Western Pacific certainly not having any issues in terms of energy these are the temperature anomalies you can still see quite clearly defined the La Nina event and the subtropics of the Atlantic a little bit cool but a massive warm pool just where the invest uh, what was it invest but is now this subtropical depression 4 right now um, what you saw on those anomalies just then is that this system is tracking over some very anomalously warm sea surface temperatures which are pushing right up to around 26, 27 degrees Celsius and that's why we're currently in the National Hurricane Center of currently forecasting a subtropical storm to peak in the next 12 hours with winds of 40 miles per hour. Of course, you can already see its movement is tracking away from the United States and will be, for the most part, away from Canada as well. 
um, and you can see now just entering nighttime hours there on the sandwich imagery uh, and you can see not much convection around it so the subtropical tag is about right and the uh, earlier ASCAP passes found that it did only have around 35 mile an hour winds in fact it was um, not a closed circulation until fairly recently this is what the last model run said I think this is 18Z um, and you can see there forecasting well they're all over the place there the models one or two forecasting weak tropical storm subtropical storm I should say um, wind shear will rise very soon in 6 to 12 hours that's really the only opportunity this system is going to have of getting named sea surface temperatures as well actually not being um, being underestimated there by the models the sea surface temperatures in my opinion Looking at June 23rd, 1978, Carlotta was weakening from its Category 4 peak and there's a terrible image of it because the image processing department cocked up somewhere. Uh, Tropical Storm Rose was um, meandering through the um, western part of the Western Pacific, north of the Philippines, and Polly had turned post-tropical and was well up towards the Aleutian Islands by now and it was treading ever further towards the northeast. That's all that we had on this day. Quite a few isolated storms elsewhere on other days in various years. So you've probably already heard, but the next name on the Atlantic hurricane season list is Dolly. Even though this cyclone currently is subtropical, if it does become a storm strength cyclone, 40 mile an hour winds or higher, it will get that name. In the Eastern Pacific, Boris is next. In the Western Pacific, Sinlaku coming up on at list three. Hone next in the Central Pacific, by the way. In the North Indian Ocean, Gatti is next up on the brand new list one. And in the Southern Hemisphere, um, we've got Imogen next up in the Australian region, followed by Joshua. And in the Southwest Indian Ocean, Kundai next on the list. And in the South Pacific, Yolanda. That's all for now, and we'll be back again with another Tropical Weather Bulletin tomorrow. Check out our new look cyclone tracker on the Force 13 website for the latest up-to-date information. You can also find us, of course, on our YouTube channel, search Force 13, and also on Facebook and Twitter, Force 13 at Force 13 on Twitter for the latest updates. You can also help the project become even better by becoming an ultimate fan on YouTube. To see the full list of Ultimate Fan Benefits and to join, visit youtube.com forward slash force13 slash join. With a special thanks to our top supporters this month. You can also check out our growing merch store so you can show Force13's colours wherever you go. You can also find a link to our Discord server underneath this video in the description.